So I'm going to talk about, I guess, my exploration of wind around the world. Uh, so these are some of the places I've, I've done work, uh, except we have a project in Africa, and that hasn't started. So, so just ignore the, the African countries, but we've worked in, uh, worked in all the other countries that are listed. Uh, one of the first projects I did was in, in Jamaica. And just stuff you le learn while doing wind projects is, I don't know if you know about uh, Rastafarians. It's a religion. And uh, this is one of, the, one of the things that comes out of it, which is braided hair. They believe in love, peace, equality, vegetarians, and cannabis. This is very much part of all their religious ceremonies. So really enjoyed it. And, and this is a picture. <laughs> this, is, this is a picture of the wind farm, <laughs> wind farm that we helped design in, in Jamaica. Uh, the next location is, is Mongolia. And, and I know Jaspal has been there. I had, I had posted some of this, and Alice immediately sent a comment back. Hey, Jaspal did some work in Mongolia. So Genghis Khan is, is everywhere. He's just bigger than life in Mongolia. And I'm st standing in his shadow. And there I am on the side of a road. Uh, There's a guy who's just allowing you to take pictures of a big, big vulture. Right? So he gives me a glove, and I, and I put it on. And this bird is heavy, heavy. And, and the talons are sort of on the glove, and they're sliding and sliding, and it starts scratching me. And the guy who had this bird started speaking in Hindi. He said, Kahan se ho, or kyun aay ho, and all that stuff. So this guy, the Mongolian guy who lived in India for about 10 years, and, and he was back, I guess, doing some touristy stuff for us. <laughs> This is uh, at an inauguration of a 50 megawatt wind farm. So this was one of their cultural programs. And again, we had all these guys visiting from outside. And, and I, had, I had never heard what's called throat singing or guttural singing. So that's what this is. And we, we got to sign on a, on a long 48 meter GE blade. This is a very, very bright Buddhist temple in Mongolia. And, and for, for a long time, basically, religion was outlawed. And it just started to come back. So beautiful new temple, but really bright. Then I, I took a long trip uh, in the Gobi Desert. And this is a gear. Uh, and it's about min minus 20 degrees outside. And uh, the, so, so this is a breakfast gear. So, so you go in and you have breakfast. And it starts with, with vodka. <laughs> and, some, and some biscuits. Yeah. And, and salty tea. I don't know if any of you have had salty tea. It tastes quite different. Okay. And, and this is the crew. These are, these are folks who were with me. And you just. All you do is put layers and layers of clothing. And of course, we were also doing a wind project. So this is, this is laying off a foundation of a, of a wind turbine. Uh, the next one is, uh, is an island in Indonesia. This is closer to Australia, and it's called Sumba Island. Uh, and, and this is what their houses look like. They have this funny shape, uh, really tall. and. Uh, so, so the bottom part of the house is where the animals live. Right? And then the upper layer is, is where people live. And this is where the spirits live. So they have, they have room for everybody. Uh, uh, th this is some of the things you get to do, stay in beautiful resorts. Uh, uh, and, and this is the back side of the resort. So upper quarters are for sleeping. And then. It's the bathroom. 
and it's open. This is the shower area and the bathroom, everything is just, it's just open. And these are some trees in Sumba. And these are live, live trees. And you wonder, wonder how they are standing up. The next, a bunch of slides from Philippines. And uh, this is in the northern, northeastern, uh, sorry, northwestern part of uh, Luzon province. And it's called Ilocos Norte. Really beautiful area. And uh, it's fun to go out there and, and, and watch these beautiful machines produce energy. And, and this, is, this is beautiful sunset in, in the same place, same wind farm. Uh, now from serenity, um, I'll move on to war zones. So the, the, we were tasked with basically looking at the wind resource in Jaffna in Sri Lanka. So Sri Lanka, as you all remember, uh, has had about 30 years of just brutal, brutal war. I mean, now, now it's all calm. So as, as we pass through villages and towns, you would see, see completely bombed out structures, right? The walls are standing. Most of them had no roofs, obviously no windows. Everything was bombed out. Uh, this is another one of them. And then at, at one point, the, the Tamil Tigers had captured a, a large container ship. And they basically were cutting out steel for, uh, I guess, armor protection of their vehicles. Uh, and, and this is where, uh, I guess, the bombed out buses would go. This is their resting place with a sign that says, you know, mines here. Um, and, and these were again signs of, for landmines. So, so, you, so you're traveling through this, this bombed out place, war zone, and, and then you see the sign. So right in the middle of all this, there's an army checkpoint with this beautiful sign. So let's drink Coke. So this is a the, this is a, a Hindu uh, uh, Garuda, which is a a big I guess a animal uh, a bird on which Lord Vishnu sits. So it's the carrier of Lord Vishnu, and this was in Jaffna in in Sri Lanka where they do this dance that resembles a Garuda flying. Uh, now this is end of life. So I, I spent some time in Lebanon. Uh, again, a fun place, if you, if you can get there. Uh, and the Phoenicians, this is how they used to bury their, their dead. Big sort of stone kind of cavity with a lid on it. And, and they, just, they just pile in the dead there. And in Sumba, it so happens, they do the same thing. So in, in front of the house, they have these large structures, uh, again, with a lid. And the dead are put in there, and the lid is closed. And it's just right next to your, your quarters, right in front of your quarters where you live. Now, I don't know if, you know if you've seen this or if you know about this. This is, again, in Indonesia, some very, very old civilization where they would bury the ch children in trees. So the theory is... Uh, I guess the, the children would be, uh, I guess, would get wings and they would fly away or something like that. Now, now let's get to coffee. So one of the best coffees I've had is, is the Luwak coffee. And this is uh, basically from coffee beans that a cat, it's, a, it's called a civet, civet cat, that, that eats those uh, fruit, uh, obviously digests the pulp, and uh, gives, out, gives out coffee beans, right? <laughs> As poop. So, and then they package it. But it, it does taste good. <laughs> uh, and then I, I saw the sign in Sri Lanka uh, which is a elephant dung 
paper products company. Okay? In, in about six languages, you know, they're describing what it does. Uh, well, so that's my journey through, uh, or that's my wind journey through the world. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, Pramod. Do we, are there any questions for Pramod about um, civic coffee, sorry, or civic anything else? Cat. Civic cat coffee. I actually, in Indonesia, had a cup of that civet coffee. It cost $50 a cup where I was at. Maybe you got it cheaper. Very, very strong. Um, could you say something about your shirt with the wind turbines on it? Oh, that's right. I forgot that. So this is a shirt that we made, we got made in Philippines. This is a project shirt. It has turbines on it. And, uh, and so, you know, as, as project, we were discussing, okay, what kind of shirt should we get made? So this is a cotton shirt. It costs about $30. We could have gone with a banana fiber shirt, which costs about $150, or a pineapple fiber shirt. Looks very similar. That's about $300. So we went with a cotton shirt with, with embroidered wind turbines on it. And, and, and over all your trips, how many megawatts of wind energy do you think you've been responsible for installing around the world to promote? Uh, so most of the work I do is, is in the preliminary stages, helping private developers, helping sometimes government set up policies uh, for wind. So mm, actually, the, the biggest success we've had is in Philippines. We started helping the government with policies, and they put in a feed-in tariff. Um, and then the industry just took off. Again, we were not directly responsible for the industry, but the industry has about 300 megawatts now. Mongolia, we, we helped with the 50 megawatt wind project. Indonesia, uh, it's just taking off, and hopefully it'll be about 200 megawatts in Indonesia. And, and about 50, 60 megawatts in Sri Lanka. That's fantastic. Okay, oh, one quick question, yes? So with regards to a lot of these different places where you're setting up wind turbines, especially like renewables, do you have a lot of issues with not well-developed grids that you have to sync with? And if so, like what, what's kind of the avenue that you all are taking to? Right, right. Um, intermittency can be yes, a challenge. Yes, grid integration is, is a big challenge, but, but it's one of those things when you start out in a country, you talk to the utilities, and their answer is, no problem, no problem, until the units start going live. And, and so we've kind of changed their approach. Well, well, don't tell us no problem. Let's work with you. Let's model this thing. Let's figure out how it's going to be impacted. So, so there is a much bigger change. Um, but initial wind projects, 1%, one to 5% penetration, even 10% penetration, it's not a big issue. As, as soon as you start getting to 20%, it becomes bigger and bigger.